Hey, look at you, all grown up and needing car insurance. You don't have to freak out if you got a driving record that's not so hot or worry if you aren't sure exactly what you need. Able Insurance has your back. Pass up the national insurance companies where you're just another number and keep your auto insurance right here in Charlottesville. 979-0814 is the number. Ableinsurance.com is the site. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? Say one more time. What up, what up, what up, the Ball Hawk Show? What up, 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 do? Welcome to the Ball Hawk Show podcast. I'm your host, Ahmad Hawkins, and I appreciate you taking time out today to listen to the latest episode of the Ball Hawk Show. As always, if this is your first time listening to the show, make sure you subscribe to the Ball Hawk Show podcast on any platform that you're following the podcast on. Make sure you go to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave a review. Um, Follow the podcast on Anchor, Blog Talk, Radio, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play. is on so many different platforms and it's accessible and very easy to get to. And if you like videos, go to YouTube. Um, I just started another YouTube. Uh, my last YouTube channel was shot down around Thanksgiving. I had like 2,000 subscribers. Now I'm starting from scratch, but it's all good. But that's enough of the pleasantries. This podcast episode will be discussing the departure of another University of Virginia basketball player, and his name is Kyle Guy. Number five on the court, number one in your heart, the most outstanding player in the recent NCAA March Madness tournament. He has declared for the NBA draft. Um, it's It surprised a lot of people. They didn't see it coming because in everybody's mind, he's the, the least uh, a tractable prospect out of the big three that we had and DeAndre Hunter, Ty Jerome, and now Cal Guy. And a lot of folks just don't believe that Cal Guy is ready for the NBA. You know, you, you, you never know if you're ready until you go. Um, but he, he had an Instagram post and it reads, I set a goal with my brothers when we committed to UVA. Three years later, we accomplished that goal of winning a national championship. I also set a goal for myself to play in the nba today i will be declaring for the 2019 draft and signing an agent i am diving into this with two feet to achieve my dream but i will leave the option of coming back to school open to wahoo nation thank you so much for embracing us from day one to my family i am thankful for your support and love to coach bennett and the coaching staff thank you for allowing me to pursue my dreams and making me a better player and even better person lastly to my future wife alexa thank you for being my rock and the unconditional love and support you've always shown i am forever indebted to you to the moon and back i am blessed beyond words every last praise and all glory goes to god salute to cal guy for his decision everybody always asks me ball hawk what do you think of these guys leaving early I thank the world of them. I applaud them. I love anybody that's stepping out on faith and betting on themselves and um, doing what they feel is in their heart is right. You know, this is their dream. And um, we're the day and age where we as fans try to dictate what athletes do, what we feel like we would do in that situation. But I always tell people, if we were in their situation and playing somewhere was your dream and the opportunity presented itself, we will all jump on it. Now, you got folks saying, you know, um, he has to improve on his ball handling. He has to improve on this. One more year would have helped him do this, 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 and that. Sometimes guys just outgrow a level. Even if they have eligibility left, they just feel like, you know what, man? Just just think of Cal guy. He's sitting here. He came in with, with DeAndre and came in with Ty. See both of those guys leave very successful career and you cow guy you look at yourself and the career that you have being a marksman from three-point land being first team all um i about to say all arena all acc third team all american acc tournament mvp 
I mean, the dude was the 13 All-American, a two-time 13 All-American last year, NCAA Final Four Most Outstanding Player, annual NCAA champion. It's, it's just hard for you to put that off and return just because some folks feel like you may not be ready or you may not get drafted. And there's no guarantee that he'll get drafted this year. There's no guarantee that he'll get drafted next year. But it's a guarantee that he will get an opportunity. And that's all we want in life is opportunity. We can't get caught up in the position of the draft. We can't get caught up in the lead in which we play in. If your dream is to play professional basketball, then that's what you strive to do. If you just limit yourself into the NBA, then that's what you do. That's that's the dream you chase. If you say, hey, I'll go overseas or hey, I'll go in the G League because it's folks that's you know, being really disrespectful to the G League and saying, oh, why would you leave and then just go play in the G League? The G League, the, the, the average salary in the G League is 44. I think the minimum is like 35K. You can make $35,000 in just five months. Um, have people saying, well, you know, make sure you get your degree, blah, 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 blah. blah. Yeah, you get your degree in college. And uh, if you have a bachelor's, you may need to stay and get a master's. And you, you, then you don't know as far as the workforce what lane is wide open as far as hiring and what your starting salary would be but i can tell you what no matter what job you get out of college with a degree few will pay you 35 in five months few will straight out the joint no matter what especially especially when something's your dream you know when you love what you do and do what you love you can you can deal with the finances and that's why i i never I never like really look at somebody leaving early as a negative. Not saying people are, but I never really look at it as saying, oh, somebody need another year. I'm like, I'm not going to try to put a yield sign on somebody trying to fulfill their lifelong dream. I- I'm not going to do it. That's not me. If this is what you're trying to listen for on my podcast, you might as well stop now because who am I to tell somebody they need to wait another year when I myself didn't really go to class my last spring semester here at UVA because I was concentrating on the NFL. So I'll be the biggest hypocrite ever, and I'm not going to be a hypocrite. When I, when I have an athlete ask me, hey, Ballhawk, should I stay or should I leave? I tell them, I'm not you, so I don't know what you should do. And I'm not going to tell you what I can do because I don't want to influence your uh, end game in a way, in a sense of you're making a decision based off what I said because you revere or you have so much respect for me. But I don't want to sway you either way. What I'm going to tell you is go to sleep, follow your dream. If that's all you dream about is a pig skin, you know, the basketball, pig skin, baseball, whatever, that's what you follow. When I was growing up, like I said in yesterday's podcast, all I dreamed about was playing professional football. That's it. And once I exhaust my eligibility here and playing the 2000, that 2000 season, that spring semester, I was thinking about no classes. I was thinking about the NFL and training. And I'm pretty sure that's what's so difficult right now for these three gentlemen. Now, on the flip side, enter their name in, start to get more information from the GMs, team scouts, more in depth on their strength and weaknesses, where they're projected to be at, what teams like them, et cetera, et cetera. That can that reality check can change them. That can change their mind. Where if a GM or a scout or a coach could say, "Hey, I'm pretty sure if you stay one more year, you could do this," then you may see guys come back. Then you may may see guys like, "Yo, I, well, I, I could do that in the G League." You got guys that's probably saying that. Why stay one more year in college? Why well, could just do it in the G League? And I just want to say to the folks that talk, you know talk about education. Here's one thing that's getting lost in all this sauce. UVA is not going to close that door on these young men because they left early. Just because you leave early don't mean you can't get your degree. You can't come back and get your degree. It doesn't. The UVA is not going to be like, up, oh, up, oh, you left? Nah, you can't get your degree here. And we ain't going to transfer none of your paperwork, none of your credits, your transcript, nothing. But, you know, looking at Cal guy, he's been successful on every level. Mr. Basketball, Indiana, a McDonald's All-American. I mean, ACC MVP, like I said, in 2018, two-time first-team All-ACC. The accolade, accolades go on and on. And you just never know, because we've had a guy like Sean Singletary that was All-ACC since his first year and didn't go first round and went to the G League and played, you know, was successful when, when he was healthy because he got injured. 
Um, a guy like Malcolm Brogdon stay all four years, still only went in the second round. Joe Harris, second round. Then you had a, the, the guy that everybody thought was the rawest and Justin Anderson. He went in the first round. Mike Scott went in the second round. I mean, like I said, the list goes on and on as far as recent guys that Tony Bennett happened to coach. All right. But everybody, the the downfall of being so nationally recognized, and I mean by winning a national championship, is that the old cliche comes into play. Everybody loves a winner. You are a winner. You are a champion. You are the hottest commodity. Commodity. It's very difficult to be the most outstanding player, the mop, and not test the NBA waters. It's difficult. That's hard. On the biggest stage, you're the most outstanding player. That's like we people talk about it all the time, but you know, when Andre Iguodala won an MVP in the finals, no matter what you think about him, the consistent said consensus said. Even though you gotta agree with it. He was the most viable player in the finals. Whether LeBron averaged a triple double and in, in, in a losing effort, but he got the trophy. As much as we may despise certain guys winning when the Heisman trophies or or any other individual award, when they get the award, it's stamped on them. Like Malcolm Brogdon, people and myself included, I understood that Joel B was ineligible. For the rookie year because he missed so many games and Malcolm was available and he, he still had a very good year. Was he the best rookie that year? No. But according to the guidelines, he was named rookie of the year. And you stand on that. So as a fan and a supporter of Malcolm Brogdon, I go to that. He was the NBA rookie of the year. Cause there's nothing you could do to take Steve Nash, a two-time MVP. There's nothing you could do. No matter what we think about Shaq or Kobe, that that's their award. And it's tough for a guy like Cal. And, you know, a lot of people are assuming that he will probably be back and Ty and DeAndre won't be back because they're looking through their lenses and saying, well, Kyle is a smaller guy. Kyle is just a catch and shoot guy. In the NBA, at that size, you got to be able to set the table, run the point because he's the outlier. Like, usually guys like him, it's like a J.J. Reddick. And, I, and if I'm not mistaken, J.J. Reddick may be, a, like, I think J.J. might be 6'4". Um. Yeah, JJ six four. So you got to fall into the perfect spot. Oh, and let me say one more thing. Yesterday I said that they had into that both players or anybody that declares early has until June tenth. I was looking at the NBA website, and the NBA website got some old janky ass date that don't make any sense for a NCAA athlete because the actual date for them I think is the 27th or the 28th or the 29th. If between the 27th and 29th, I wanted to say the 27th just to be 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 safe better early than late so in order for them to be eligible to remain to, to come back and play in the ncaa even though they entered into the draft they got to withdraw their name out of the pot of early draft eligible players by may 27th not june 10th i don't know what the nba is trying to do and they're gonna have dudes in la la land but i gotta serve them shut the hell up juice for having a dumbass date that's late to where why would i withdraw out my name out of early entry nba by january 10th on your date when NCAA say May 27, 28, or 29. It's one of those dates, and I don't feel like typing it in a computer. That's all I got to say. You're acting like Stephen A. Smith. Come on, man. Like, come on, man. Cut your date back like his hairline and put it in the May 27, 28, and 29. It's one of them dates. But with Cal Guy, if I was him, I'll, I'll definitely reach out to a JJ Reddick and then, and, and, and review the film with him. Like I said, JJ's in a perfect spot to where. Um, he's 6'4 Cal guy's like 6'2 Maybe 6'3 um, You just gotta find a right spot Everybody loves shooters And that's one thing that, that can't be um, You can never have enough shooters And looking at JJ JJ actually got drafted first round 11th overall back when he came out in 2006 But we know he bounced around a lot And then he really came into his own I wanna say uh, that last year in Orlando in 2012 when he averaged 15, then he went to Milwaukee for one year. But then with the Clippers, that's when he came to his own, averaging 15, 16, 16, 15. Uh, went to um, Philly last year, averaged 17, when he got that $25, 26000000 million contract for one year. 
Then he averaged 18 this year. So it, it even took JJ a minute to get acclimated to the NBA game. And the game is trending back towards shooters because that's why a guy like Joe Harris um, is is really loved right now. But Joe Harris is a bigger guy, 6'5", 6'6". Um, so with Kyle, man, he's a, he's a sniper. He's a shooter. Textbook. He's more athletic than people think. He's a two-foot jumper, so he, you won't see him really try to just dunk on somebody. But he can get up. Go check out his mixtape from when he's coming out of high school. He can jump. Um, but, yeah, man, I just want to give a shout-out to my guy, Cal Guy. Always serve. Shut the hell up, Juice, all year long. He used to throw the sign up. Definitely appreciate the young man. Good luck to him. Um, good luck to him and his future wife, Alexa. Um, just a great couple that's been dating since they was in middle school. And um, he, he's a man of God. And. You don't question what God puts on your heart. You go with it. Um, he's going to pray on it. And whatever he does, he's going to be very successful. So that's what I got for y'all, man. Good is the enemy of great. Be great in everything that you do. Wahoo, why? We out. I want the whole world spin my record. Share old. The hood styles. Check game. Stay free records. Ho! Show the girl for the death in a massaging. Bad news, even be massaging. I got a fitty hip. I be massaging Pinky rings on my finger, I'm massaging I got a speedboat concert cause I massage I coming through about a whole kind of lodge I be massaging, I be massaged I'm coming through with Cadillacs and massaging Yeah, I both subconsciously massaging I got GPS, I be massaging I catch croaker fish cause I massaging I like a macaroni plate, I be massaging Even oodles and noodles, I be massaging Put out the ghetto Cause I'm a sergeant I got ice around my neck Cause I'm a sergeant A even gold chief I'm a sergeant A pinky ring iced out Cause I'm a sergeant I got a hundred million dollars I be my sergeant I got ten dollars I be my sergeant I got a thousand dollars I be my sergeant I got twenty two cent And be my sergeant I take a penny And be my sergeant I tell shorty girl fat I be my sergeant You big too I be my sergeant I be my sergeant I be my sergeant I got a GPS stern with massaging. Whole share road chain be massaging. I got a f Uzi, I be massaging. I got a 12 gauge pump, I massage. I got a hundred thousand, I massage. Ain't broke, I be massaging. I stay paid, I be massaging. I stay late, I be massaging. I hit the poop all night, cause I'm massaging. She wanna come through loaded and massage. Whole team, we massage. Bad new party constantly massage. Ain't no joke, I be massaging. Even the bacon and eggs, I be massaging. Huh? Polo shirts, Santo Adidas, I be massaging. I love you, sweetie cake. Spin my record, let me give you the game. On how to get rich, take a penny and flip a penny. Then 40 billion. Huh? Why? I be massaging. What? Car stern wheel. I be massaging. The whole, the whole label of the state free records in the VA. Oh! We be massaging. Let's have a money shot.